I shook my head to try to clear the sleepiness out of me to no avail. I really didn't get any sleep last night. It's already time to wake up. Wait, school? As soon as I realized I had to go to school, I slid out of bed and looked at the vanity mirror. That's a relief. Luckily, there was barely a bruise on my cheek. Hit the screen to actually see it. I thought anyone would actually notice it unless they leaned really close. Ready outside, I got dressed took my backpack and caught the bus to go to school. It was even hours before everyone heard of the news. I was approaching school and given condolences for my loss. However, that was what struck my friends. Wait, so you have the whole Anderson house to yourself? Lucky as hell, man! <clears throat> Quit being so sensitive, Naomi. Quit being so vulgar, Suzu! Of course you would side with her. Ha! Huh. See? At least she knows how to have fun. I know how to have fun! You don't need to be wild to have fun! Guys, I'm going there after school today because my parents want me to get used to living there. Seriously? It hasn't even been a day since you came back to school. I know, but my parents want me to try living there as soon as possible. Still, that's really fast. Are you going to be okay? Of course, but even the cover of my best friend's life seemed to keep testing me. Oh! Hey! Don't go around shoving people like that! Whoops! Did I strike a nerve, Capini? She let out a small laugh as she twirled her hair around her finger. Lisa, one of the last people I wanted to see today. It's not me you should be apologizing to. Oh, Anderson. Hey, how's it going? Um, alright. Uh, haven't you already heard, Lizette? Of what? Her grandfather's passing. Ah, well, I'm sorry about that. I don't really watch a lot of news. It doesn't really sound like you mean it. I do mean it. Earnestly. Why wouldn't I? Typical Capini. Isn't her family involved with the Mafia or something? I wouldn't be surprised if she brought out the bat from behind her back right this moment. I had nearly forgotten the crowd that followed Lizette, which was mostly comprised of people that no one wanted to see on a typical school day. No one had the slightest idea why exactly they followed Lizette around persistently, but they allowed themselves a social class with her. That is out of line! Suzu comes from an honest family! Says the one whose family profits from political scandals. Yeah, your dad doesn't make anything unless he's in the courts with dirty politicians. <sighs> hey, let's all calm down for a second, alright? I'm sure Anderson needs some time to recuperate. I mean, what just happened? We need to give her some respect. Chess, stop! Stop acting like that already! Don't you feel sorry for me? Hmm? Huh? What are you talking about? I'm sure you're happy seeing me like this. You already have everything you wanted, and now seeing me like this? Life couldn't get any better. Bitterness seeping to me, and the words start flying out of my mouth without filter. But honestly, I didn't care. I was so consumed by anger that only saw Lizette in front of me. What exactly am I to you? Just another part of your obstacle course? Is that what I am? I'm sick of it, Lizette. I'm sick of all these carriages. I'm sick of you. Cast rose from the crowd around her and was brought back to the school hallway. Even my friends beside me looked at me in surprise. One girl looked like she was going to speak up while Lizette had her hand up to stop her. There was an emotion in her face that I couldn't quite make out, but I could see a form of pity in her eyes. No! Don't you dare pity me. I look away from her. I want to see that emotion in her eyes when she was talking to me. She didn't have the right to look at me that way. I'm sorry. 
I know your grandfather passing away must have really taken a toll on your emotions. She stepped towards me and put her hand on my shoulder, giving me a tiny smile, as if for old time's sake. But for some reason, I didn't feel covered at all. Maybe I was just angry at her, but the expression on her face when she leaned close to me turned her into something complex. Something was different about her. I couldn't quite place my finger on it, but something about her had definitely changed. Well, I'll be going for now. Track meet responsibilities and all of that stuff. See you later. Something about Lizette made me feel uncomfortable. I wasn't just angry, but also uneasy. What was it? I had never seen her like that before, but I decided to pay no further attention to it. She continued running down the hall with her gaggle of friends behind her. I refused my attention to Miss Phyllis, who was walking down the hall toward me. Is everything alright, girls? Nothing we couldn't handle, Mrs. P. Just a bunch of snobs. Suzu, hush! It was nothing, Mrs. Phillips. I see. Well, Miss Anderson, please accept my condolences for your loss. Thank you, Mrs. Phillips. Your grandfather was a good man. He really upheld the philanthropy of his company's policies, and the money that went towards charity, too. I know. He was amazing. I really look up to him. I want to be as good as he was. Well, I know that you'll be as great as your grandfather. Hell yeah, she will. She'll be ten times better than her grandfather. Would I? Would I really be better than my grandfather? Everyone seemed to have high expectations for me. I wanted to do my best and make my family proud, but to be better than my grandfather? I wasn't sure about that. From outside the school window, I saw a family of Luca pull up with a car. Undoubtedly, it was my father in the driver's seat. Oh, my ride's here. Well, I guess I'll see you both tomorrow. Want us to come with you? Oh no, it's okay. <laughs> I'll be fine. See you. Hey, Dad. Hey, honey. As I got into the car, I noticed my father looked troubled, scratching his steering wheel and staring straight ahead, as if something was really bothering him. About what happened yesterday. I'm sorry for yelling at you. Does your cheek still hurt? No, it's nothing to worry about. I mean it. I shouldn't have laid a finger on you. You know that you're my most precious daughter. You're all that I have. I... Yet he couldn't bring himself to say what he could never say to me for such a long time. I always wanted to hear those words to affirm how he really felt, but I guess even now he couldn't say it to me. I threw my head away to look out the window. There was no point in waiting for something that was never going to come. And like that, he started to drive and the conversation between us and uh, I decided to focus my attention on the passing scenery. We were taking the usual road to grandfather's house. It was located within the vicinity of the school district, but still pretty far from the school and from where our house was. He had always lived alone. He insisted on doing things by himself, even at his age, living in such a large house. I wonder, did he pass away with no one on his side as well? It sounded so lonely. And sad. It was strange that he decided on living all alone in his large estate. If anything, he could have lived with us. Though he and my father probably would have given each other the silent treatment the entire time. Maybe living alone was preferable to that. Actually, I hadn't visited him for quite a while. Visits to his house were most frequent when I was a child. I had grown up long since then. The last time I visited though, I thought he looked just as he usually was. Happy and healthy. But things changed. In the back of my mind, I knew that he would have to live one day. It wasn't like humans could live forever. So why did my heart still feel so heavy? The car I was mostly spent in silence until he spoke up again. How was school? Maintaining your grades, I hope. Uh, yeah, I've been trying my best so far. Trying? That's not really doing the best you can, is it? With my father, only some words I said were filtered through his ears. It was difficult to keep a conversation without eventually talking about academics or my future, 
even if it was something loosely based on it. You always found a way to integrate whenever we talk. Anyway, your belongings are in the trunk. There isn't a lot, so I'm sure you can manage bringing them inside the house. After all, you are on the road to being independent now. Yes, I can manage on my own. The usual aside and will soon be with us. I really wasn't sure what to say around him, especially when most of the time we didn't share the same opinions. One question did linger in my mind, though. If he was going to justify acting so nonchalant in grandfather's funeral, I had the right to at least know why. Say that about you and Grandpa. We are not talking about this. I feel like we should be. Because Grandpa did leave us yesterday, so... I wouldn't care if he had left even long before that. I do not want to hear it, and that is the end of this conversation. As always, he managed to shut down any form of conversation related to him. It was just like what happened last night. I opened my mouth slowly by a close again. It was like talking to a brick wall. It wasn't like I could find out anything by somehow arguing my way through it. Alright then. I increased the card and started out the window. I really couldn't think. What would this place be like? I had been to my grandfather's house before. It was one thing visiting and it was another thing actually living there. How would I manage living on my own without any training to really care for a house? I knew that naturally the bills would be paid by my parents who inherited grandfather's stocks to the corporation, but had never lived independently before. Thinking about it made me feel like some kind of a bird being pushed out of the nest. Though I was technically an adult, I felt unprepared and a bit down at the prospect of actually moving into a new place. Most people my age would be ecstatic moving out. After all, it would symbolize some kind of change in their lives, like being on the road to independence. I felt like it was nothing of a sort. I really hope I wouldn't let my parents down. I want to let, let grandfather down, but what would he be saying right now? I gaze up at the passing clouds in the sky. If you're out there, grandfather, how would you be doing? Would there be anything you want to tell me at this moment? And of course, no answer. What was I doing? Searching for an answer in a heaven that would or would not exist. I tied my hair to stare at the blur of trees and cars from the car window. My hair was definitely going into clouds there at the moment. Either way, I found myself being driven off to my new home. I could. Hey handsome, I really enjoy your date. You surprised me of what I might just have in store for you next time. I'm not sure if I won't have to censor it. Oh, I will have to censor it. I will have to censor it. I mean, nothing is showing, but that will not go through on YouTube. Aiko, you are a crazy... Okay, okay, thank you.